Welcome, everybody, to another edition of Ask Octopus, where we answer your interesting questions from the week. Uh, joining me today is Derek and Ryan. Hello. Hey, and, we have a, and we have a newcomer. We have Sean Cessna joining us today. He just started with us at Octopus Deploy. Hello, Sean. <laughs> so I got a pretty interesting question for you guys today, and this is something that has come up every once in a while, but it's just enough that I think we, I, I, I want to answer it because I didn't know how to solve this particular issue. And what this is, is how do you see the contents of a worker's working directory? Have you guys been asked that question at all? In a roundabout way, um, often you see it well, it's because the, the worker directory changes. Um, mm. So in a roundabout way, yeah. I don't, I think this one's new for me, so. It's Sean at all, have you seen it at all? No, I hadn't used workers yet. <laughs> well, fair enough. Uh, because what happens is, um, let me show you my Octopus Deploy instance, is when you're running work on a worker, it's going to create this temporary directory, and it's going to do the work inside of that temporary directory. And then as soon as this step is done, it's going to nuke that directory right away, which I would say 95% of the time, that's perfectly fine, uh, except when you're trying to debug things or you're trying to figure out what it's, tr what it's doing or anything like that. So it's kind of a pain at that particular point in time. Um, so I, it was funny, I brought this up to our engineers and they said that they actually have a way to solve this and it's built into Calamari itself. It's one of those hidden variables. Don't you guys love those hidden variables? Oh, they're my favorite. Exactly. It's like, cause it's always something you don't know about. You're like, oh, we have that, awesome. I can, I can just add this to my script and everything works again. Exactly. So you could actually add this variable to your deployment project and you give it a path. So I'm giving it a server share path. And what it will do is go ahead and create a release. And what it's going to do is first it will, it, it doesn't run from that directory. So I want to make sure we point that out. It doesn't actually run anything from that directory. What it does is it performs the transforms on any of the files. It kind of does all the prep work and then it copies all the contents to that directory. And then it will actually do the step itself. So if we were to look inside, inside of the task log itself, uh, let's go to the raw. Raw is the, probably the best way. So you'll see right here, I'm starting in this directory, my work directory. And then you'll actually come and see it's doing all this stuff, extracting pa package, performing variable trans uh, substitution, doing some transforms. And you actually found, you know, I'm doing my test variable replacement, all that other good stuff. And then at the very end, then it says I'm copying the working directory. Now the script itself, you'll notice I'm using that our good friend right highlight. So then you can actually see, oh, now I'm doing the actual work, but I am doing it inside of that because my script itself, all it does is gets me my location. I say get location and then right highlight location. That's pretty much all it's doing. Hey, Bob, can you scroll to the right? What's the full path? So it looks like it's added, it's appended some, some folders to yours. Yep, absolutely. So I'm actually going to show you what that looks like. Yep, so here is the path. So this is what I provided it, working, working output, and then I did, and then it's the name of the project, testing some workers, the deployment itself, and you can see the date modified. And then the step, which is push, push package to worker, and then the vert, you know, how often that happened. And then it actually you can actually dive in and see all that good stuff. What's kind of interesting is it shows you the bootstrap, the bootstrap script. It copies a lot more than what I was expecting, including the package contents, because I'm extracting a package in this particular sense. And if I go into my published websites, I need to clean up this package. But if I come in here and I open this with Notepad++, no, I don't want to download that, you'll see that the this was actually replaced. The variable was actually replaced. So it's kind of a handy way to see what's going on with the worker packages uh, without having to try to write a bunch of other scripts to try to figure all that out. A uh, couple other caveats aside from it not running in that directory is it will also um, not run the retention policies against that directory. So if you have this turned on, then you know, it's going to start filling this up. I have this on my NAS, so it's not that big of a deal. I have you know, 12 terabytes, but I think eventually I would probably fill my, my NAS off if I, all I did was just do this over and over and over again. 
yeah, it's a nice, simple little way to, to do that. I thought it was kind of a, it's kind of a neat way. And I think, yeah, we added it in there probably because we were trying to debug workers and try to figure out what's going on. With what's going? On. Yeah. That'd be real handy for debugging. If like your script's not working exactly right or something's not getting injected exactly right. Mm -hmm. Or a good way to verify that it's transforming the way you think it is. Yeah. That's actually where the use case came from, from the customer I was talking to, because they wanted to see, uh, because I think they were doing Terraform. They wanted to make sure everything was getting transformed correctly. I like it. I like seeing our old friend write highlight too. <laughs> awesome. But yeah, it was a quick episode today, but I just wanted to show a quick way on how to do that. So if you have an interesting question you'd like us to answer, uh, go ahead and submit it to us at hello.octopus.com slash askoctopus. That's a form you can fill out. Or you can email us at support at octopus.com. That's really for more of like a support style questions. Uh, we'll help you. And then if we like your question, we'll uh, present it here on the video. We'd also love to uh, chat with you. Go ahead and join us on Slack over at octopus.com slash Slack. Thank you very much, everybody. Yeah, thanks, Bob. Yeah. Thanks, Bob. Thanks.